Now, a response to some of those variants, Dr. Fallis and I were talking about our new hotel quarantine measures that go into effect tomorrow. Anyone flying back to Canada will have to isolate in a hotel at their own expense while they wait for the results of a COVID test. The government estimates maybe about three days. Some Canadian travelers are concerned about the cost. So joining me now from Edinburgh is Canadian student Gabby Boulding. Hello, nice to see you. Hi, Rosemary, how are you? I'm good. So you're over there uh, being a student, uh, just yes. going to school, and eventually you, you will have to and want to come back. Um, what are your concerns about that right now, Gabby? Um, so for me, the biggest concern is that obviously everything's changing every day, but my visa is running out. So I came over here September 2019 with the plan of being here for about a year and a half, and my visa expires on March 9th. So I legally have to come home. And I've known this has happened for so long that I've budgeted, I've planned, I know flight costs, baggage fees, all the extra stuff. But $2,000 for a student or a just finished student is absolutely something I don't have. Yeah. And so the plans are just kind of unexpected. Um, and I'm just worried that when I hit the ground, if I can't financially afford this, what's going to happen is the biggest thing. For sure. So you're you're in Edinburgh, and have you asked if you could stay longer? Is that a, a possible solution, or not really either? Um, not really. So a couple of things. Right now, the visa applications, in order to extend them, are only being accepted for people whose visa ends up until the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. Mine expires March 9th, so I miss that by about a week. Um, and then legally, the big thing is that if I overstay and just decide not to travel, I run the risk of being deported. I run the risk of not being able to come back if we have an in-person graduation, right. future visas, all sorts of things like that. I also technically legally won't be allowed to work if it's not legally extended. Um, I can't stay in the flat where I'm at because legally you need to have a right to be in the country in order to be renting. All of those things are big concerns. Okay, yeah, so you're, you're really in a pickle, um, <laughs> to say the least. You've, you've reached out to the government. What has been the response yeah. for you so far? Um, so this one's been interesting because I've reached out to pretty much every level on every platform possible, whether it was social media, my parents phoning uh, from home or my direct emails. And from the lower levels, the honorary council here in Scotland, from the members of parliament, both in the Georgetown area and Milton area where my parents are, uh, they have been great in the sense that they've responded, but they can only give me the answers that the federal level has given them, which at this point has been, I'm sorry, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you in the loop, which was great three weeks ago when the restrictions first came out, but now is starting to get a little um, frustrating. Yeah. And in terms of the higher levels, the ministers and the prime minister's office and the people that have the ability to answer those questions, I know they have been asked. Um, for example, on Friday, Patty Haju was interviewed and asked specifically the two very most important questions that I need to know. What are the exemptions going to be? How do we apply? And she answered it with, quote, the government has been very clear on the fact that there will be limited exemptions. Yeah, Didn't so, really answer the question. Yeah, I interviewed uh, Minister LeBlanc, which people in Canada will see coming up in, in an hour's time. And it, I, I must say it uh, about your the notion around your case in that you, you got sort yep. of stuck there rather than you went to a beach. It didn't sound like um, it didn't sound like there was a lot of openness to covering your costs. Um, Obviously, the measures are in place for people who are traveling, who have left the country mm -hmm. for non-essential travel. So how do you make the case for your case and how your case is different? Um, to me, I think the biggest thing is the idea of choice. I obviously choose to come, ab come abroad, but I did that in 2019, far before the pandemic started. In March of 2020, when all of this hit, I have since then not traveled, I've not visited home. I've done nothing. Um, and so in that case, when it comes to the legal obligation to travel home or else be deported and have no health care, have no right to rent, have none of those things, I don't think people in my situation and students are really choosing to travel. We're just doing what we have to, right. which in terms of if you look at the definition of essential, that's exactly what it is. It's when something has to be done and you don't have the choice. That's right. So what is your plan right now? When are you supposed to come back to the country? Do you have a credit card that could cover this cost? Like, what is your plan right now? Um, my plans change every day. So my current flight is booked for March 8th, which is two weeks from tomorrow. My visa expires on the 9th. So I literally am down to the last day. 
Um, I'm coming home. I'm going to fight and try to get my swear out there for every step of the way until then um, and answer. So I haven't yet booked a hotel. And my plan is to try to get an answer before I do so. If I hit the ground in Toronto <clears throat> and get forced into a hotel, I have no problem with that. I have no problem quarantining wherever they ask me to. But financially, I will try to put it on my credit card if it gets declined and or I am in a negative dollar amount in my bank account going forward. That's a really unfortunate situation that I'm going to have to deal with. Yeah. What about your family or or are you trying to make a point here? I mean, could, could you come up with the money or could your family come up with the money? Or is this also just about making a point about, you know, about your situation and others? Because there's other people I've heard from, too. Oh, for sure. Um, to me, honestly, it's a little bit of both. Um, my parents, the bank of mom and dad, is not really an option. Uh, they were wonderful and helped me with some of my other degrees, but they personally have been through some of their own really big financial struggles in the past couple of years and months. They mm -hmm. are separated and have had to deal with the whole multiple household situations, a younger sibling, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. to me, it's not really an option. Right. And I think it's also really important, as you said, to remember that it's not just me and there are thousands of people in very similar but very specific to them situations. And some of them don't even have family. So that's right. Yeah. If they sent themselves overseas and they got over here, that's great. But this was not something that we considered when we planned that. OK, Gabby, well, uh, I hope someone's listening. I hope this helps you get some answers. Uh, we will we will continue to try that. And, and let's be in touch. Let's stay in touch um, to know if you if you manage to get back and how that unfolds. I hope we can do that. Absolutely. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Gabby. Nice to meet you. That's Gabby Boulding there in Scotland trying to figure out how she's going to get home and pay for that hotel quarantine.